Okay, we're going to do another HCMC update, and this time from Reddit, I'm going to link to the article too, so you can read that if you're on a desktop, but if you're driving or anything else like that and just want to listen, I will go through everything point by point for you. Make sure you like and subscribe. This is getting a lot of good engagement over the last uh, couple weeks in this channel, and we want to keep that up. So we're going to be looking at the SEC Form 4, and this was the form that came out probably last week when it showed the transference of shares some people called it a purchase some people called it a acquisition and then others called it uh, something else but this is what it really means and this was this came from last week when there was a transfer of billions of shares to the executive to four executives in the company so let's check out what it is so the sec form is the statement of changes in beneficial ownership within a given company this is a document to be filed whenever there is a material change in the holdings of companies insiders and that's what we saw this happens whenever insiders buy or sell the company stock now who are those insiders we already know that but there were four people on the executive team and this just kind of goes to qualify what an insider is bullish versus bearish they would talk about what these signs are typically when executives buy uh, and acquire more stock so i think we all know that this is a pretty bullish uh, indication how to read the form four and we're just going to glaze right over it they have the transaction dates that let's hone in on real quick the date the transaction took place insiders have two days to file their form four to the sec for that reason we might have multiple dates on the form four Form 4s can be filed in advance for scheduled transactions, in which case the date would be later than the Form 4 was actually filed. And then everything else is pretty straightforward in my mind, uh, in my opinion, to this. And once again, I'll link to it as well in the bio. There are two main types of transaction codes. And as HCMC shareholders at the moment would be interested in knowing about this. There's a full link uh, and description right there there's general transaction codes that these involve the outright buying or selling of a stock and then there's rule 16 b3 transaction codes grant and award and other acquisition pursuant to rule 16 b 3d disposition to the issuer of issuer equity securities pursuant to rule 16 b exercise or conversion of derivative security exempt pursuant and then let's go ahead and skip how this actually we're going to go down and it talks about how what this means to us in the HCMC specific uh, case. So we saw the four, four, form, four form filings that have been submitted to the, the SEC by the CEO, CFO, COO, and um, one other person on the executive team. And we referenced that already at the top of this video. This is a Excel spreadsheet with the two tables, non-derivative and derivative securities, with all transactions filed for the CEO, Hallman, Jeffrey Elliott. So Jeffrey Elliott Hallman. And then, and have inserted the explanation of how these shares were calculated and where they come from. So then we can see right here, the uh, director in question, the transaction date, while they, why there are two dates, as we discussed already, the transaction code, which we just saw up top, um, the RSA amount, securities acquired or disposed, acquired, and then vesting ended. No on the first one and then yes on the other one. And then we have the derivative securities, transaction codes, and then the last one being a grant award, conversion price, shares amount, and then fully vested uh, acquisition date, February 1st, 2027. So explanation of calculations for the share amounts. The initial stock options the CEO held may not be exercised if the exercise would result in a holder benefiting, beneficially owning in excess of 19.99% of the common stock of the issuer outstanding at such time. And then we have the explanation of the vesting period, 11 billion shares in 2017 vesting period conditions with the vesting schedule as followed. Um, the, the, as of the February 2nd of 2017, what is that, 12.5 billion? And then uh, 12.5 billion as of March 31st, 2017, 12.5 billion as of 
June 30th, 2017, and $12.5 billion as of September 30th, 2017. I know a lot of y'all had been asking me about the vesting schedule and the vesting period, so I wanted to hit that as well. 1.1 billion shares in 2020 with vesting period conditions shall vest 12.5% increments on the last day of each of the eight of the next eight calendar quarters commencing March 31st, 2021. Someone put that in the comments, and um, I am going to pin that later if I can find it. Providing the reporting person has provided continuous service to the issuer through the applicable vesting date. So let's go and just check out this analysis right there. Uh, the user, the, the author rather, the transactions conducted by HCMC insiders were not a direct purchase nature, but rather a routine stock compensation program each insider adheres to. So they basically just exercised it, right? The initial stock options issued to the CEO of $50 billion in 2017 were used in the granting of the RSA of $11 billion in 2018. The subsequent RSA in 2021 was not taken from the stock options, but rather, from what I presume, taken from the reserve of shares the company holds as explained in the above section. Yes. All yes. New vesting period. Having a vesting period for $1 billion new shares for the CEO alone for over two years might indicate that the company is looking at HCMC as a long-term growing business and is willing to commit to its growth and expansion. I agree with that too. And also, as we talked about in our previous videos and our due diligence videos, if you haven't seen any of those and new to the channel, go and check those out. But as we saw there, I mean, these patent litigation lawsuits take a really, really long time statistically. I mean, up to two years in some cases, some cases longer, but especially if they're getting a jury trial. And as we saw in former um, articles and former references that HCMC is requesting a jury trial, when you know, when you looked at the statistics like we did in, in former videos, once again, check them out, then you can see that jury trial really is the way to go when you are um, kind of on the HCMC side. You really do want a jury trial, and that is something that they have requested. Their law firm has requested for them to get a jury trial. So there are two beneficial ownership limitations, one formalized on the 8K and the other expressly stated in Form 4 filings. So let's check that out. Shall be, oh yeah, we talked about that already, but 9.999% of the number of shares of the common stock outstanding immediately after giving effect to the issuance of shares of common stock issuable upon conversion of preferred stock held by the applicable owner. And then a holder upon notice of the corporation may increase or decrease the beneficial ownership limitation uh, to its preferred stock provided that the beneficial ownership limitation in no event exceeds 9.99%. So what does this mean? The company wants to limit the preferred stockholders from reaching 10% threshold that qualifies as insiders, and then the directors from reaching 20% threshold that qualifies for change of control. This is why the stock options amount that you can see is not indicative of what is really going to happen as the company put many restrictions in place to safeguard change of control. And then this is their conclusion. While it's not a direct purchase, yes, as we talked about, the RSAs were not taken from the original stock option pool, but rather taken from reserve shares the company has. Absolutely, yes. This is in of itself to be interpreted in many ways. Either this is a normal procedure that directors followed. I would throw out that assumption, albeit it does not feel or it does feel off as the newly acquired shares did not come from the common stock they had already owned. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, I, I just can't imagine this that's not normal procedure i mean that's there's no precedent in this history there's no history of that that we've seen so I, let's just throw that out or they the insiders preemptively took on additional shares from the reserved share pool vested for eight calendar quarters two years because they have information about the lawsuit and their expansion as a company that we do not have access to i'm not quite sure it's that either i mean i'm sure they do i'm sure they are privy to information that we're not really privy to but i think maybe their information just comes from their calculations of the statistics about their optimism in this, you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure it's that they have different information that we do or anything. I, mean, I don't think they know. I think they just probably, I think this just shows to me that they're just optimistic about the chances. Um, and they said the last point 
would constitute a very good sign for us, and it means that the insiders might know this will go very well and have improved their long-term outlook on the company by committing to a vesting period of two years, making NC, HCMC into a long-term investment. That I've always been saying that it's a it's a been a, it's going to be a long-term a long-term play. And then someone commented this in on one of my videos, and I liked this quote, and it's funny that uh, he brought it up here. Insiders might sell their shares for any number of reasons, but they buy them for only one. They think the price will rise. And let me know if you think the price will rise as well in the comments. We're going to keep on doing HCMC updates, BLSP updates, lots of OTC updates, and I have a lot of due diligence videos coming up very soon. It just got monetized. Well, waiting for a monetization review, but just had all the check marks and all the Google AdSense and all the things you have to do um, granted as of Sunday. So very, very exciting. Thanks so much for showing some love to the channel. Continue to show some love to the channel, and I will continue to show love back by getting at least one video out every day, minimum, maybe, uh, maybe two if we're feeling frisky. Make sure you like and subscribe, and thanks so much.